بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the opportunity to gather here and commemorate a great man who dedicated his life to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the truth and justice. I also would like to thank all the, our speakers that came from far and close to this gathering and we are very much obliged and they have honored us. I also would like to thank all the brothers and sisters who have come from London and other towns in the UK to be together. There is a beauty in being together that you can never achieve through other ways of communication. Even if you are watching something live online, it's never like being there and breathing together under the same roof. So thank you for coming, and I'm also sorry if our space is uh, not large enough to uh, make you feel comfortable. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as you know, revealed on the day of Ghadir, after the declaration of the successorship of Imam Ali was made by the Prophet. I don't want to discuss the main topic of this verse, but I want to say something about the leadership. So this is why I start from here. Our great the scholars have reflected on the difference between ikmal and etmam. Why does Allah say, today I perfected your religion and I completed my blessings? So one is a matter of perfection, another is a matter of completion. For example, Ayatollah Mutahari says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have perfected your religion because even before this, the religion was complete but this is a matter of increase in the quality. While completion is when before this completion you had some missing parts. For example, sometimes we make a house and we don't have window or door, so the house is not tamam, it's not complete. But sometimes the house is completed, but we don't have furniture. So we cannot do this, we don't have electricity. So it's completed, but it's not perfect. It's not good for life. Islam without a leader who represents Islam and represents Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is complete, is tamam. And therefore, if someone believes in Islam but doesn't believe in Imam or Walai, he's a Muslim. But it's not kamil, it's not perfect. It's not functioning. Because it's with the leadership that you can benefit from this gift of Islam. So we very clearly in our jurisprudence, we say every Muslim who believes in the ideas of Islam bears witness that there is no God but Allah bears that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was his messenger. And does not deny any of the self-evident doctrines of Islam. And self-evident means something which is accepted by all Muslims. And even non-Muslims know that this is part of Islam. If someone doesn't deny these things, for example, doesn't deny the Quran, doesn't deny hijab, because even non-Muslims know that these are parts of Islam. So, whether it's a 
believer in this school or that school, this mazhab or that mazhab, they are all Muslims. So we don't make acceptance of imamah a condition for being a Muslim. Every person, whether he believes in imamah or not, if he believes in Islam and the pillars of Islam, he is considered as a Muslim. But at the same time, we believe that imama and wilaya is something which perfects Islam. Like a house which not only is completed, but it is furnished and equipped and ready to benefit. Like a hospital which is completed, but there are doctors, nurses, medicines, equipments that now it can function. If you don't have doctors or if you, don't, you have university without professors, no matter how beautifully you have made the building, it's not going to function. And also it's possible that some people, when they see there is no qualified person to occupy the job, they may change the function. If you have hospital without doctors, then some people say, oh, this is a good place, let's make it a disco. This is something that I also many times say to people, you know, if you have a mosque, if you have a center, you have to make sure that you have an alim. Because a mosque, a center without alim is like hospital without doctor. It's not going to function. It's completed, the building, everything is completed, but it's not kamel, it's not perfect. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after this perfection, with the appointment of proper leadership, then he says, "Al-yawm ya'is al-ladina kafaru min dinakum, fala taqshawhum waqshawm." From today, not yesterday. Today, the enemies have lost their hope because now we have everything together. We have the infrastructure, all the facilities plus qualified leader. La takhshawhum. Do not have any fear of outsiders who may want to harm you. The enemies who want to harm you. Don't have any fear. Vakhshawm. Only have fear from me. Which means only be worried not to perform your duties and responsibilities of taqwa towards me, which I will explain later, that through Allah, then we become responsible towards other people. Through Allah, we are even responsible with respect to the insects and plants and even non-living beings. But our responsibility for everything comes under our responsibility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَا تَخْشَوْهُمْ وَخْشَوْنَ So, those who have right leadership, who would represent true Islam, not only in their teachings and words, but also in their actions, should not have any fear. This is Allah's instruction. But what about then those leaders themselves? About them, Allah doesn't say, La takhshawhum wakhshawhum. Allah, instead of putting it in the form of command, put it in the form of statement. These are the people who are true leaders. These are the people that Allah confirms that they have fear of Him. Of course, inshallah, I will explain this khashya is not just fear, it's a special type. They have fear of Him and no one other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is only such people that then can lead the community and the community which has such leadership should not have any fear. They only should be worried about the relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I think about Imam Khomeini rahmatullah alayhi, this verse very much singles out in my mind. And of course, this is also a verse that we can also try to implement and inshallah sooner or later in different capacities we also inshallah hopefully become an instance of this verse 
الله سبحانه وتعالى says الذين يبلغون رسالات الله it's very short sentence but it has lots of meanings inside the responsibility of leaders and then the community behind the leaders is not to impose is not to force people to accept the message of God it's just a matter of whatever the prophet did was just to deliver the message of Allah and this is the responsibility of every leader not to force you cannot even force the message on your fellow Muslims let alone to force it on other people we have to make sure that we make the message available to people this is our responsibility towards Allah this is our responsibility towards our fellow human beings because we believe that this is a beautiful message and we don't want to hide it and we don't want to keep it only for ourselves just a matter of sharing and sharing goods and bounties is a very important value but to make sure that you really deliver the message of God is not easy there are many people in the world that they think and maybe sometimes honestly sometimes they are not hypocrites maybe they honestly think that they are delivering the message of God maybe they think what they do is really Islam or Christianity or Judaism or Hinduism but after careful examination it becomes clear that this is not the message of God because message of God cannot be corruptive cannot lead to injustice cannot lead to merciless killing and indiscriminate killing of people so this cannot be a message of God so how can we make sure that we are really delivering the message of God and not the message of Satan coming through our ego but under the banner of religion this needs knowledge it is very interesting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and here he says so it means that these leaders are ulama those who have deep and profound understanding of the message of God people who have dedicated their lives for the sake of understanding it's only after 30 40 50 years of a study teaching writing discussion and it's very important being available for the critique of your peers then then you can reach this level that you can say oh alhamdulillah now I have reached that level of understanding that I can rely on my understanding you know our ulama when they give permission of ijtihad the ijazah they say from today it is haram for this person to do taqlid so up to yesterday it was haram to follow his fatwa because it was not reliable but now it's haram to do taqlid this shift this turning point is something that is very difficult for someone who is not involved in the very active and vibrant life in the seminaries to reach it's very difficult it's not impossible but it's very difficult it's why we are so much focusing on recognition of the ulamas and seminaries of the people who want to reach the level of marja'iyah sometimes we have the worries that in future people may you know try to bring the marja'iyah down by putting many many names out so that people you know be deceived now we have you know marajah that are spread in different towns in the west and sometimes you are worried you know why this is happening sometimes might be honest but sometimes can be also problematic in any case if someone has this life of study and recognition then 
he and the people who follow him can be sure that the message is coming from a reliable source. You know, Alhamdulillah, in Shia Islam, in the school of Ahlul Bayt, Alhamdulillah, I am not saying we don't have problems, we have many problems. But Alhamdulillah, we have lesser problems than some other schools of Islam because we are very keen to follow for every practical ruling our maraj. When in the time of revolution, some people had the idea that, you know, we should use weapons and guns. They didn't do it because they thought this is a good idea. Or they didn't take advice from imam of a local mosque. They asked marja, and marja gave no permission. Now we see, for example, in Iraq, when some people are attacking mosques or pilgrims, the grand... Ayatollah Sistani, he says, no, you cannot do any retaliation. This has saved our community from doing actions which are not Islamic. Why? Because, alhamdulillah, we have this institution. And we have this idea of following a leadership that in addition to taqwa, in addition to their connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and piety, they have deep knowledge of the teachings of Islam. So these people, yakhshawnahu wa la yakhshawna ahadan illa Allah. They have no fear. If people say, you know, there's a story in the time of Bani Sadr. There were problems, you know, with Iran's first elected president and, you know, uh, other parts of the system. And then there was a meeting in Jamaran. And that was before Imam's pub public speech. So when they had the meeting, they could hear the uh, slogans of people. Ruhemani Khomeini, Butshekani Khomeini. So people were, you know, very interested and very much excited that soon they would see Imam. So they were loudly, you know, saying these mottos. And Imam Khomeini told them, if all people who are now doing these things in my favor, if they all say, down to Khomeini. But I know that I am doing my duty, it doesn't make any difference for me. Whether millions of people praise me or blame me, it doesn't make any difference for me. If I am sure that this is what Allah wants from me. But what is interesting, is that this is very much different from the people who think they are working for the sake of God and they don't bother about people. This is very much different. When we say, يَخْشَوْنَهُ وَلَا يَخْشَوْنَ أَحَدًا إِلَّا اللَّهِ It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has so much attracted them and occupied their heart and mind that they are 100% attentive to their responsibilities towards Allah. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you are responsible towards your husband and wife. This is khashya of Allah, not khashya of my husband and wife. It's khashya of Allah that make me fully respectful towards the rights of my husband or wife, and even more than rights, to be a channel of mercy of Allah to them, to my children, to my neighbors, to my enemies, it is Allah who says to me, La yajramannakum shana'anu qawman ala Allah ta'adilu. You cannot be unjust even to your enemies. Why? Because then it's not your enemies only. It's Allah who is going to claim. Why you did it? zulm to your enemies? Even you cannot do zulm and to an insect. Amirul Mu'mani said, وَاللَّهِ لَوْ أُعْتِيتُ الْأَقَالِيمَ السَّبْعَ وَمَا تَحْتَ أَفْلَاكَهَا أَلَا أَنْ أَعْسِيَ اللَّهِ فِي نَمْلَةٍ أَسْلُبُهَا جَلْبَ شَعِيرَةٍ مَا فَعَلْتُ Because it's not a matter between me and this insect or this ant. It's a matter between me and Allah. This is a big difference between Islamic view and some other views. If I have to observe the rights of people, then the amount of care would be depending on how much that person has power to claim or negotiate. 
then the weakest people would receive the least of attention. When you are dealing with the powerful people, with the people who have access to the lawyers, to media, you become very careful. When you are dealing with the weakest people, you are not that careful. And when you go to the animals, when you go to the environment, you care less. Because, you know, as we say in Farsi, these are zaban baste. They are speechless. They cannot do anything. But from Islamic point of view, because my responsibility comes from my relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then I have to be more careful with respect to the weakest. You have to be extremely careful about the people who have no support. Never do zulm to someone who has no helper other than Allah. A child, a wife, a woman, a neighbor, a person from another face who is our guest. We are all Muslims and then we have a Jewish or a Christian person who lives in our neighborhood or in our country. They have no one to support them. You have to be very careful with respect to these people because they don't have any helper other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a beautiful hadith which says, Inna Allah, la ka Allah never gets angry as when he gets angry when women and children are mistreated. So, yakhshawnahu wa la yakhshawna ahadan illa Allah. It doesn't mean that you only have fear of Allah and you don't bother about people. It means that you have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then through that, you are extremely careful about every creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially those who are not able to stand for their rights. So I don't want to take that much of your time. I know that our time is already uh, over. But just to summarize what I wanted to say, I think we Muslims are always in need of leadership sometimes we may not find perfect leadership but as anything else when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you something if you benefit and appreciate then allah will give you more we shouldn't wait for imam mahdi ajjalallah ta'ala farajuhu sharif and do nothing We don't have infallible leaders today, but we have leaders with this level of piety and knowledge that they can lead us. And if we listen to them and follow them, then we would be upgraded to a level that then we would need infallible leaders. At the moment, Allah says, you are not even benefiting from fallible leaders. At the moment, you are not benefiting from their knowledge and wisdom, which is not comparable to Imam Zaman. When a time comes that I see you have exhausted everything that you knew and you could learn, then I will upgrade you to a higher level. And then you would be given the blessing of being led by my last hujja. So I hope that, inshallah, as community, we learn how to follow our true leadership and how to inshallah also give opportunities for good leaders to emerge leaders don't come you know from heaven it's the community that also builds the leaders if people were not listening to imam khomeini imam khomeini could have remained an unknown scholar in the seminary so we have to give credit also to the people who let imam khomeini to emerge it's the community that leads, uh, makes the leaders. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the reappearance of Imam Zaman ajalallah ta'ala farajahu sharif. And I pray that inshallah whatever we do and say and intend and think about inshallah would be pleasing to our Imam. I hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would bring our hearts much, much closer than it is now. Alhamdulillah we are united but inshallah Allah would bring our heart much closer. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect and strengthen our families. I think our families are not to be undershadowed by any other thing that we do in our community. The most important thing to, inshallah, look after and 
protect is the institution of family. I hope, inshallah, our community worldwide would be the example of commitment and loyalty to family, inshallah. And I hope that, inshallah, Allah would help us with leaving behind the youths, the progeny that would be always on the right path. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his mercy to all people who have passed away, all who have rights upon us, our parents for parents, our teachers, our ulama, our maraja, our martyrs, and especially the late Imam Khomeini. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give healing and shifa to all the brothers and sisters who are ill. I again thank you everyone for whatever you did for helping to come together and commemorate the Imam Khomeini. May Allah be with you. But thank you very much.